Hey everyone. So in this video, what we're going to do is use Fusion 360 to create a computer terminal for a Dr. Mindbender. I recently got my Dr. Mindbender and to be honest with you, I haven't even taken him out of the package yet, but I want to take him out um, so I can take some cool pictures with him, but I want to have a diorama for him as well. So I want to use Fusion 360 to create something like this. Now, a little bit of background in this video. This picture that we're looking at right here, I already created that in Fusion 360. But long story short, I lost everything. I lost all of my work. So I was a little bit disappointed in losing all of my work. I know that you may say, well, Fusion 360 has an auto save. It does, but my computer shut down on it kind of froze up on me and shut down unexpectedly and i wasn't able to recover the files so all the work that i did that you see in this picture right here is gone and it was partially my fault and partially just uh, a mistake so it is what it is but i thought i'd take that opportunity to start over and make a video just helping some other people create some things in Fusion 360 or any other program for that matter. Now, I am very, very much a beginner. I want everyone to know that some of the things that I'm going to do, uh, there probably are easier ways to do it. There are different tools within Fusion 360 that I have not discovered yet that um, could probably make my work a little bit easier, but I'm going to show you what I know. So if you follow along and you want to try this on your own, you could probably uh, recreate what I am recreating um, and just use the tools that uh, the basic tools that uh, we're aware of. So we'll learn as we go. So we're going to try to recreate this computer terminal as best we can. Now this will probably be, I may break this video up into different parts. So we'll see how that goes. Just depends on how long I want to work on this today. So let's go to Fusion 360. Here it is. And I'm going to assume that as you work on this, you know uh, some of the basics. But as I start to go through it, you're going to learn some of the basics as well, because that's all I know are the basics. So in Fusion 360, one of the things that you do is you draw or the, what I'm going to do, the technique I'm going to use is I'm going to draw a sketch and then I'm going to use that sketch to extrude and um, turn and uh, create the different shapes that we need. So we're going to start off with our base. And so this is our work plane and you can zoom in and you can zoom out and you've got your little, um, you've got your uh, square over here that pivots your camera. There's some other ways that you can do this. If you have a scroll bar on your mouse, which most people do, if you click and drag that middle button that will pan left and right. If you hold the shift key down and you click the middle button and move around, you can orbit your object or rotate around your object. So that's something that <clears throat> that's a useful um, tool that uh, is not very intuitive if you've never used uh, Fusion 360 before. But let's get into this. Let's start with our base. So I'm going to come up here to the top left and I'm going to choose Create Sketch. When I click on that, it's going to ask me, well, what, what plane do you want to do this on? Well, I want to do it on the flat plane, the flat surface. So I'm going to choose this plane down here at the bottom. And it rotates so I have a straight on view of that particular plane. Now over here are some different tools. Um, we can, we can, it says look at, it says sketch grid, uh, snap. I like the grid being there. It'll snap to this grid and there's some different things as well. But the one that I want to point out is the snap. I think that that's something that is helpful. And then once you draw, your picture, your sketch, you're going to click on finish sketch. So I want to start off with a rectangle. So I'm going to click on this rectangle up here in the top left hand corner. There are some different shapes that we can do and we'll eventually get to those. But I want to make one. I'm going to click right here and you'll notice that my mouse is kind of snapping to the intersections of these little squares. But I'm going to start right here and I'm going to start to 
pull this sketch out. And I believe when I did my original sketch, I started with a 200 by 100 square. Now, what if I didn't get that exactly? Well, if you notice up here at the top, that 160, 150, 160, 171, it's changing. I want this to be 200. So I can just type in 200. And then if I hit tab, it'll come over here to the left. And I want this one to be 100. So that's another way that you can get the exact size that you want. Once you get, once you type those in, then this, the rectangle doesn't move around with your mouse. And I've got it the way that I want it. I'm gonna hit enter. And there's my sketch, but I haven't quite finished it yet. So I feel pretty good about this size sketch. I think that's what I did originally. So I'm going to click on finish sketch and there it is. So now I have this blue rectangle, which is the beginning of my base. Now, one thing that I noticed is that if you click on one of the sides and Let's, uh, whoop, I'm doing a few different things. If you click on the sides, you can highlight the different sides and you can even move your sketch around by clicking and dragging one of the sides. But I really don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna hit click uh, uh, undo and move it back to where it was originally. And what I wanna do now is I want to extrude this and make it, give it some depth. So I'm going to come up here to this tool. This will be a tool that you use a lot to extrude. And the hot button for that, I believe is E, but I'm not really using hot buttons. I'm gonna use all the um, icons that are up here for now. So I'm gonna hit extrude and it gives you a couple of different things you can do. You can rotate it a little bit, you can pull it straight up, and that's what we wanna do. I'm gonna make this five. So as I pull this up, it goes by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I do not want my base to be that big. What I want my base to be is five millimeters high. And by the way, you can change and work in inches, but I like working in millimeters. So I wanna change that to five. And there's my five millimeter thickness and I'm going to hit OK. And there is the beginning of my base. So that's a nice little base right there. Just a nice little rectangle. And now if I go back to my picture, let's go back to my original picture. We can see that I've got kind of a curve down here i've got this this side is rounded off and the same thing on this other side my original <clears throat> excuse me my original model was rounded off in those two spots so i'm going to do that right now let's go back to fusion 360 and i am going to use um this revolve tool right here now i'm going to zoom in a little bit because what i want to do is i want to res revolve this side, this uh, face is what it's called. I'm gonna zoom in pretty far. This face right here that I just highlighted in blue is what I want to revolve. Now I have to give it not only the face, but I also have to tell it, what do I want to revolve around? It has to have something to, to curve around and revolve around. So let's click on revolve first. I've already got that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I've got this side selected and I want, I want to revolve it around this edge right here. So I'm gonna select that edge. Now what pops up, if I go back out here, since I selected that edge and I selected uh, that face, the, that um, plane that I want to uh, revolve, it gives me this circle. So I can grab this little blue circle right here and I can start to revolve it out. Ah, that's neat. And it can go, you know, either direction that I want to go. I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. And if I remember correctly, I think I came 150 degrees. Maybe it was 145. I don't remember exactly what I did originally, but I'm just going to go with look. You know, we're just kind of creating as we go. I kind of like 145 degrees right there. So I'm gonna let go. I think that looks good and I'm going to hit okay. And so now I have my base 
with that edge or that side revolved around that one. Now I want to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to click on this time I'm, I'm going to click revolve first and I want to select this side and I want to select this, got to get a little bit closer, this corner, which it's not letting me select. I'm not sure why. Uh, oh, I have to go down here and move to axis. And there we go. So I had to come over here to this side. I had selected the profile, the thing that I wanted to um, revolve. Now I click over here to select the axis that I want to revolve around. Zoom back out. And I'm going to go the same amount on this one. I'm going to bring it around 145 degrees. If I wanted to, I could just type it in 145 and it would take me right to there. And before I hit OK, I want to show you over here on this side. It says operation join this this little spot right here, join or cut or intersect or a new body or a new component. Well, if I wanted to create this little circular uh, part of my base, if I wanted it to be its own thing and not connected to the rest, then I would want to select new body, but I don't want to do that. I want it to be a part of the original base. So I'm going to leave it as join, but we're going to use some of these other, um, these other options a little bit later, but I want it to be join and I'm going to hit okay. Whoops. Zoom the wrong direction pan over with my middle button and there we go there's my base so i think that looks pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy with that base right there and that looks pretty close to what we had originally no originally maybe this was a little bit shorter but we'll see um, but that that base looks pretty good we've got to add some different things to it. All right, so what should we add next? Well, let's go back to our picture. I was just there. Here we go. On this picture, I think what I want to do now is add this little table right here. Um, I like the way that that looked. I want to add this table. So I'm going to work on this right now. All right, let's go back to Fusion 360. And what I need to do is draw a sketch of that table go back to it one more time if you look at the top of it it's got a curved edge right here and then it's kind of looks like a piece of a pie maybe a piece of a pie graph it's not centered at the pie graph but it kind of looks like the piece of a pie graph this side goes straight back this side is straight but then this back side is curved so here's how we can do that i'm going to go up here to create sketch and I don't want any of these planes that are given to me here. I want to go right on top of this base. So I'm going to click the top of my base and it takes me to the top of my base. So right now, um, my plane that I am going to draw this picture on this sketch is on the plane, the top plane of the base of the computer. So I want to start off with a circle. So I have to come here. So I click up here where it says circle and it's kind of difficult to get this exactly, you know, curved right along with it. Um, unless I start where the curve, where the curve was rotated. If you remember, I rotated this side of the base and used this edge right here as my, uh, rotational tool, if you will, my fulcrum. Um, so I'm going to start right there and I'm going to click and pull out, drag out until I get where I want it to be. Now, this is where things can get a little bit, you know, you can get fancy with it. You don't have to be super, super precise. I kind of like where this one is at. And I like that says, um, that the die or not the diameter, but the, uh, I think that actually is the diameter. Yeah, the, that um, number that is given to us right there is the diameter of my circle. It says 184.391. Uh, if you are like me, I don't like having a decimal there. So I'm just going to go 
let's go 185 and I'm going to hit enter. And there is that part of the sketch. Now at this point in time, I could come over here and click finish sketch, but that means that my, my sketch would be this entire circle. And I actually don't want my sketch to be this entire circle. So what I'm going to do now before I click on finish sketch is remember, I want this, I want there to be a side to this table right about here. And I want another side to this table right about here. So I'm going to come up here and continue to draw my sketch and I'm going to choose this one, which says line. So I click right there and now I can draw some lines. Now I'm kind of eyeballing this. I know that there are ways to get more precise measurements, but this right here looks like it's about five or I'm sorry, about one of these squares. If I zoom, let me zoom in a little bit. This is a, about the distance from here to here is a little less than one square away. So I'm just do my best and maybe start this right about, let's start it right about there. Now I am snapped onto this circle, which is actually what I want. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and I'm going to go all the way up to this line, this vertical spot right here. Then I'm going to continue because I'm not finished yet. I'm going to continue to draw this all the way to that part of the circle and stop. So now I have this. If you look at this blue line, I kind of have a piece of a pie. It's it's not a very nice looking piece of pie right now, but I have this piece of pie right here which I am going to extrude into my table. So I'm finished with my sketch. I am happy with the way that this looks. So I'm going to hit finish sketch. And there we go. Now I am going to come over here. I'm going to hit the home button because it takes you to right about there. Now you can still see this sketch on here. Okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But this is what I want to do. I want to take this piece of the pie. Notice when I hover over it, it highlights. I want to take this piece of this sketch and I want to extrude it up to create my table. Now, I also have this piece and this piece and this piece over here. And I actually have this piece right here as well if I wanted to use that one. Now, I don't. So I'm going to click off on that. What I want to do is I want to extrude this one. Now, before we go any further, I want to come over here and show you a few things. You've got bodies and sketches. So let's rename this. I am going to click on this little triangle here and I've made two sketches. I have my original sketch, which when I hover over sketch number one, that's my original base. If I right click and go to rename, I can rename it original base. There we go. And then this sketch, let's click off of that. This sketch right here is that it's the circle and the two lines that I made. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to right click on it and rename this one as um, left table. There's my left table. Okay. So now I want to, I want to create that table. Now let's go back to my, to my original picture that we're trying to recreate real quick. If we look at this table, um, it comes right out of the base. But what I want to do on this is I want to create a little notch, a little cutout, if you will, in order to put this table inside. I want, I want this table to be its own thing. Eventually I'm, I'm going to 3d print this. And I want this table to be its own thing because I would like to have the opportunity to replace this table with something different. So I want this table to be its own piece and I do not want it to be connected to the base. So we're going to keep that in mind when we start to create it. So what I have to do first is I have to create a little puzzle, uh, a little cutout for the table. And then I need to create the table so that when it gets 3D printed, I can drop it down into that little cutout. And then eventually, 
sometime I can, if I want to do this, I can take out that table and I can put in something else that is the same shape. So it's the, if I if I make the base of the of a different table or maybe a different you know diorama piece to go in there. I've got some different ideas. Um, I can drop that in there. So this is kind of a mix and match thing. So that's what I want to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the cutout and then we're going to create the table. All right, here we go. Let's create the cutout first. So I am going to go over here to extrude and then I have to select the piece that I want to extrude and it is this piece right here. Now at this point in time, if I were to lift this up, it would extrude out and that looks like what I want for the table. But remember, I want to make the computer, I want to make the cutout first. So instead of extruding up, I'm going to extrude in the negative direction. Well, the easiest way to do this, if we remember, our, our, the thickness of our base was five millimeters. So I'm going to extrude down 2.5, whoops, excuse me, negative 2.5 millimeters. So I type in negative 2.5. You notice that this arrow is now pointing down. That's exactly what I want. It's kind of hard to see at this moment, but it is extruding down. And I want this to be a cutout. Now, if you notice what happened when I went negative, this operation over here on the right hand side changed to cut. And that's what I want. I want to cut out part of my base. And I like the way that this looks. I'm going to hit OK. And there is my cutout. Now, if I zoom in a little bit and I orbit around this, you can see that I've got my little cutout. And there we go. Beautiful. All right. So now how do I make the table so that the table fits this cutout? Well, if you notice, as I hover over these different pieces, I've got the main base and I'm on, it, it highlights now, the main base is highlighted. If I hover over the cutout, the cutout is now highlighted. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extrude my cutout to create my table. So I'm going to click right here where it says extrude. I'm going to select this piece right here and I'm going to extrude it out. Now I want this to be, gosh, I'm trying to think how tall I want it to be. Um, we're going with 1 12th scale. So that is um, 1 12th scale is, you know, we're looking at six inch, six inch figures. And let's do a little bit of Google here. All right, let's come back. Do a little Google. If I go millimeters to inches, I should know this. Uh, one millimeter is this, but I want to change this. I want this to be about three inches tall. So that's about 76. All right. So um, 76 millimeters isn't bad. I would probably go to 75 millimeters, but I got to remember that um, I have, have a two and a half point cutout. So let's go back to Fusion 360. I've got a two and a half millimeter cut out right here. So if I was at 75 millimeters, two and a half down, that takes me to 77 and a half. I think I'm just going to go probably 80 millimeters, 78 or 80 millimeters. Let's take a look at it here. If I bring this up at 75, there's 100. That's way too much. Let's change this to 80. There is 80 right there. I, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go with it. Um, that's about three inches. Okay. Right around three inches. If I'm right, let's go back to my math. Yeah. Double check myself. Three inches is, is about 76 millimeters. So this is a, a little over three inches tall and that makes sense for a table height. I like that. Now here's where I got to be careful. Remember, I want my table to be its own thing. I do not want my table to be a part of my base. So over here where it says operation, I do not want to click on join. I want to click on new body. So this is creating a new body. And if you notice down there at the bottom, it says creates a new body in the active component. All right. So 
Um, and then if I go down to new component, it says creates a new body in, in the new component. So I want this, if you look over here on the left, I've got different bodies over here. So I'm going to create a new body, highlight that or select that and then click OK. And now I have my table, which is its own body. Now, now that I have two bodies, let's go ahead and come over here and let's kind of uh, close down the sketches and let's open up the bodies. I have two bodies that I've created. I've got this one, notice it highlights and that is the base. So I'm going to name it right click and I'm just going to call this base. And this body number two is my table and rename this. I'm going to call this the left table because I might want to put a right table sometime. So if I hover over left table, that gets highlighted. If I hover over the base, the base gets highlighted. And there is my table. All right, we're getting somewhere. Well, what do we do next? Um, I've got two different options here. Uh, I could, let's go back to my original picture. Right there it is. So I could either put these little cutouts, these little vents into my table, or I could come over here and I could start to make this little uh, table as well. Now over here, my, my idea for this was for this circular cylinder piece to be something that different objects could be put on. Um, my thoughts were to maybe put, um, you know, have something that lights up inside of that. That's way down the road. Um, but I kind of like what that looks like. And then this over here was a, just a smaller table on the right hand side, and it's got little vents as well. Now you notice that this part right here is kind of raised up. I've got another, um, uh, I've got another little uh, uh, riser that those two tables are put on the circular one and then the small table. Um, I'll tell you what, let's go to that. Let's go ahead and do that because it kind of, um, it kind of recreates some things over here. So I'm going to create this little riser first, but I am also going to do the cutout and then do the riser. And then within the riser, we'll make these two tables or something similar to that. All right, let's go back to Fusion 360. I'm going to create a new sketch. There it is. I'm going to do this right on the top of my base. So I click on the top of my base and now my workspace is right here. I'm going to do another one of these. I'm going to start with a circle. I'm going to use the, this corner of the base as the, uh, the center of my circle. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to click and drag this out. If you remember, the other one I think was 185. So I'm going to go 185 on this one. That kind of recreates and kind of mirrors the other side, which is something that uh, the, the OCD and math teacher in me likes. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but I doesn't make a difference, but I do teach math, um, teach high school math. I'm just a regular guy who likes to do stuff like this. So I'm going to click OK. And there's my circle, but I want to create another, remember, I want to create a riser. So I want to go to the line tool. My picture is not finished yet. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I think I want to go right about here. I could be more precise. I know that I could be more precise. And there are probably some people kind of yelling at me saying, you could be more precise. And I know that I can. Um, I want to go to right about, I'm going to be careful here because I want that edge to be, I want that edge to be parallel with the edge of the base. That looks good. And then come up here, click right there. And I'm happy with that. Okay. So this is just a sketch. So I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to click on the home button to kind of look at it from this angle. It's kind of a nice angle to look at. And remember, I am going to create my cutout first. So let's go to extrude, select this piece of the pie, if you will. I'm going to 
make this once again negative 2.5 cuts into the base i'm going to click ok and now i have my cutout you can see it right there if i click on shift and the middle button you can see the cutout remember another way to rotate and pan the camera is up here in the right hand corner and you can pivot things is what it says and pan around like that <clears throat> All right, so I've got my cutout. Now I want to create this. Remember that little riser? Ooh, I went to the wrong page, but oh, this is my Instagram where I posted it. I want to create this little riser right here. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to extrude this piece, and I don't want it to be too terribly high. It's already 2.5 down into it. So I think think well let's just take a look and see what happens i want to start off by just saying five and see what that looks like that's not too bad but i think i wanted to i think i wanted to come out just a little bit further so i wanted to, i think i want it to be five high plus the two and a half depth so i want to change this to 7.5 there we go i like the way that looks so 7.5 and i want this to be its own thing i do not want to join it to the existing base. So I'm gonna come over here where it says join and I'm gonna click on new body. I'm gonna click okay. And there is my little riser. So there it is. All right, looks good. Now let's go ahead and name that riser. I am going to rename this as riser right. Cause it's on the right side, whoops. It's on the right side of the computer terminal. Okay. So now on this riser, I want to, I, I, if we go back to that picture, I want this circular stand. And then I also want this stand right here. This is kind of a, kind of looks like a P, the letter P at the top, kind of like that. So let's, we're going to create a couple sketches. Now I want these two items to be a part of this riser. I, I don't want them to be a separate piece. I want them to be a part of the riser. So I'm going to create a sketch. I want to be on top, the top plane of this riser. I'm going to click on my middle button, kind of scroll over here a little bit, zoom out just a little bit. And so I need a circle first and i'm actually going to come over here and deselect the snap option so that i'm not snapping to these squared intersections all right i want a circle like this and i think i want to go 50. so as i move it in and out here as far as the size goes, I think if my diameter was close to 60, that'd be a little bit too big. I think if I go closer to 40, that's gonna be too small. Let's see what 50 looks like. I kind of like that. So I'm gonna click on that, but I don't know that that's where I want it. I don't like that. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this sketch. I'm gonna click on finish sketch. And once I finish it, I can grab the center of this circle and I can move it around. Okay, it's still on this particular plane, but I'm going to move it around. And I think I want it to go right about, right about there looks good to me. So that's where I'm going to put that. All right, now um, I need to probably name these sketches. This sketch right here was the the first circle let's rename it let's rename this as a uh, right table and let's re let's do this one this is my uh circle um let's say cylinder table uh, that looks good just so i have something there all right, now before I extrude this and create this, uh, this cylinder table, if you will, let's create this other table. Now, as I look at this, the placement of this circle, 
I think I can make my table look a little bit different than my original. So let's do that though. I want to make another sketch. Now notice that when I click right there, it centers everything. It goes to the center of that particular plane. So I will usually pan over, remember the middle button on your mouse and then click and drag. will pan over to where I, my workspace, where I want to work is in the middle of my screen. So I'm going to start with a circle and I'm not snapping to anything. So I think what I want to do is start at, I want to use this corner right here as the center of my circle. So I'm going to do the best that I can right about there. There we go. And I'm going to drag out. I know eh, I don't like that at all. I really don't like that at all. So I'm going to hit undo. Um, it, it, I'm going to click on, this is the best way for me to do this. I, this is where my beginner doesn't work very well. If I hit undo, there we go. And uh, it, it goes away. So let's, let's try this again. So let's use this corner. I'm going to go back to snap. There we go. I'm going to, because I want to make sure that I'm right on this as the center of my circle. So I selected the snap, go right here. And now I want, because I want the outside edge of my circle to be, of this table to be parallel to the, um, parallel to the riser. All right. Well, I'm not getting exactly, because I'm in snap, I'm not getting exactly the diameter that I want. So let's go one. I think the original diameter was 185. So let's go 180. It's a little bit too close. I don't like that. Let's go one. 75. That's a little bit better. What if I go 170? I think I like that one just a little bit better. I think I'm going to go with, eh, I don't know. Let's go one, let's go 172.5. There we go. I like that one best. Um, it doesn't really make a difference, but I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to well, I don't want to finish my sketch just yet because I want to draw in these lines. And um, I think what I want to do, I think I'm just going to go straight across. Originally, remember, I it kind of looked like a P, but I think that was because I had this circle in a different place. I'm going to start right here, and I'm just going to go straight across to right there. I don't know, I have this table like that. I kind of like that. I think I'm I think I'm gonna go with that. Now I'm gonna click on finish sketch. All right, so I finished my sketch. Whoa. Let's go home so we can kind of see everything. And what I want to do now is I want to extrude this pie piece right here, and I want to extrude this circle. All right. So let's give this a name, uh, sketch number five. I'm going to call this, rename it as, um, high table. There we go. Okay. Let's start with this cylinder that I want. Now, if we go back to my picture, it looks like the cylinder is about the same height. I'm pretty sure it's about the same height as this table on the left-hand side. And if we want to remember uh, how tall we made this table, there is a tool that will help us with that. So if you go to this tool right here where it says inspect, this is kind of nifty. I haven't mastered this by any means, but if I click on inspect, I can select two edges and it will tell me the distance between the two. So I want to see how tall this is, but I have to remember that uh, it, it is 2.5 millimeters below what I can see. So I'm going to click right there and then I'm going to click right here. And if I look, it says, oh, it's 77.5 millimeters tall. Okay. But remember that's from here to here. 
there's still two and a half millimeters that are in that are down inside of the base now what if i wanted that i'm going to click on close let's say i wanted to go to the bottom of this i wanted to i couldn't remember how deep i made that cut out well one thing i can do is i can hide this base so if i come over here to the left and i highlight base hover over it with my mouse and then i click on this little eyeball the base now goes away i just click on it to bring it back okay so now i can see this entire piece this entire table uh, without some of it being covered up so now if i go to inspect i click right there i click right there oh yeah i made it 80 millimeters tall that's how tall i made it okay cool so i'm gonna close this i'm gonna look at my base again I want to come over here and I have to remember, oh yeah, I'm 2.75 millimeters, or I'm sorry, I'm 2.5 millimeters in, I've got that cut out there. And then this one right here, I also made five high. Let's just double check it. Click right that edge right there and go to this edge right here. Yep, from there to there is five. So if I wanted this to be 77 and a half millimeters tall, 77 and a half uh, minus five is 72 and a half. So I want this cylinder to extrude 72 and a half millimeters if I want it to be the same height as the top of this table. So let's go ahead and do that. A little bit of math there. It's the math teacher in me. So I'm going to select. Now you got to be careful here. If you notice, I don't just have that cylinder selected. Now I have the cylinder selected, but it can be kind of picky sometimes. And it's trying to select that giant circle, not the little cylinder circle that I, that I want. So what if I couldn't get it right? And it was like, oh man, I'm fighting my mouse. I can come over here and I can just click on cylinder table. Uh, where's it at? I clicked on it. Um, but it's not doing it for me. All right. I know I want it to be there. Let's get rid of pie table. There we go. If I get rid of pie table, now it's a little bit easier. If I hide the pie table, if you will, it's a little bit easier for me to select the cylinder table. All right, so here we go. Uh, what did I say before? I wanted it to be 77.5. I've already got five uh, millimeters with the riser. So I want this to be 72.5. Takes it right up to there. And I feel good about that. I do want to join this with my riser table. Um, so I will hit OK. Now, if I come over here to this little square, I want to look at the front. So if I click on front, we can see that this table is the same height as that cylinder table. And that's what I'm looking for. So beautiful. All right. Okay, let's let's go back to home. And let's make that other table on top of this riser. So I want to come back and I want to look at my pie table. So I'm going to turn it back on. And that is, I want to get a better look at it. Let's look at it from this side. Actually, let's look at it from the back side. There we go. I want to select just this piece right here. So let's see if I can do that. For some reason, I feel like, I don't know, I don't feel good about that piece. Let's hit extrude. And I don't want to extrude, that's the thing, is I don't want to extrude this entire thing. I don't know why it's not giving me this option of this little part right here, just that piece of the pie. Because if I click on it, now if I start to extrude, huh. If I start to extrude, it's going to extrude that whole thing. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to hit cancel over here. All right. So we got to do a little bit of, I have to do a little bit of um, troubleshooting here. What did I do wrong? So we're going to learn together 
what I did wrong. There might be somebody watching the video right now that knows what I did wrong. And if you notice it, quickly type it into the comments and maybe you'll save people. You can tell them where to jump to. So I guess what it comes down to is I don't, I think what I need, I know what it is. I, I see what it is right now. I drew the circle. That's my sketch. And then I drew this line right here. That was the other part of my sketch. Well, right now, there's, this is not enclosed. This little, this little piece of pie that I want is not enclosed. If I click, it includes everything inside the circle. There's no other blue line to, to cut off that, that piece of pie. So I need to go back and do this. Now, this is kind of nice. I'm, I'm kind of glad when I make mistakes sometimes so that I can go back and fix things. So I'm going to go back to right here. Down here at the bottom is my timeline of the things that we have done. And so this particular sketch is right there. Okay. And it even says pie table. Okay. It's labeled right there. I just want to start over with this. I just want to get rid of it all together. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit delete. And it just gets rid of that table altogether or that sketch altogether. So let's make that sketch again. All right, here we go. I'm clicking on sketch. I want to be on this plane. I'm going to pan over, zoom in just a little bit, not too much. I do want to keep snap on. I'm going to make a circle starting here. I think that I made it 172.5. Yep, I like the way that looks. Okay, but I do not want to finish my sketch. I want to draw a line. And I'm going to go, I'm going to start, let's start, do I want to keep the snap there? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to go from here to here. And then also I want to go from there to there, just like that. Now I have my pie piece that I want. Now this arc and these two blue lines will create the pie piece that I want to extrude out. Um, do I like where they are at? I think I do. I'm going to hit finish sketch. And now if I go to the home. And I'm going to pan around to the back side. Now I can extrude just that piece. There we go. So sometimes it's nice to learn from people's mistakes. Now I want this table to be the same height as my cylinder table here. And I think I made that 72.5 right there. That looks right. I'm going to hit OK. I do want to join it with this riser. So I'm going to click on join and there we go. Now I can call this uh, high table and let's pan around. There we go. I like it. Okay. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to, I'm going to, now just to, just to show you again, I have my base. It says it's its own body. The left table is its own body and the riser table is its own body. And I called this, oh, I called it riser right because it has a riser on these two, for these two uh, platforms. All right. I'm going to stop right there. Um, this will be part one of this video. I am going to make a part two. And in part two, I will add some details to um, these different tables that I have. And I probably will also work on the, let's take a look at it here. I'll also work on the computer screens themselves. So um, I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. And hopefully you will come back for part two of the video. Uh, in making our Dr. Mindbender computer terminal uh, so that you can have fun and make some, um, make some good diorama pieces for your action figures. All right. Hopefully you, you uh, enjoyed this and hopefully you have a great day.